I'm going to talk about digital. Right? So there's this very popular song, Mr. Craig Rains, back in the day when we were still very young. It's called Let's Get Digital. No, it's Let's Get Physical, actually. But now, there's a new flavor to all of this. You could not begin to imagine the number of BPOs that come to me and say, JDL, help us go through this digital transformation. In fact, our very good friends from PLDT there have also managed to reinvent themselves just to become a telecommunications company to a digital provider. Because now, everything's digital. Now, who here is now without a cell phone? Is there any brave soul in the audience? You're, you're, you're hearing someone who comes from a generation wherein we left our house without that nifty gadget, without anything, in fact, sometimes even without money. But nowadays, when you leave your office, the mayor was, I was just beside the mayor a while ago, and he was busy answering text messages and emails also. We have a very digital mayor. You know? If you leave your phone in your house, what do you do? You go back. Why? Because you feel naked without your digital tools. Because this enables us. Moving right along, why is it important to actually embrace digital? Why are the BPOs now scrambling to become a digital experience provider more than anything else? Well, ladies and gentlemen, while we were all sleeping, nations now are being measured not just because of their GDP or GNP, not just merely on the literacy rate or the number of population, but they are now being measured based on digital. This is a Tholon's, could you see the logo? This is a Tholon study, which is called the TSGI, the Tholon's Service Globalization Index. And the Philippines has been a mainstay there. So if you could see the 2017 ranking, we were already down. We used to be number two after India. And mind you, 1.4 billion, 1.4 billion plus and growing, including some of our islands, right? Uh, and <laughs> this table understands what I was saying. And then the Philippines, which is 104 million, is way up there slugging it out with these giant economies. Because again, technology and innovation, which translates to digital, is the great equalizer. So we look at, from a city level, we've got Bangalore, Mumbai, Delhi, Manila, which used to be number two, is now down to number four. I've got scarier numbers for you later on, don't worry. Because this is actually 2017, and you should look at the 2019 rankings, which I'm gonna be presenting later on. So aside from Metro Manila, there's nobody else. Used to be that Cebu was also part of the top 10, Iloilo was also part of the top 100. Guess what? There's only two cities that remain, Manila and Cebu. We now categorize, and the rest of the world looks at it from digital nations, and this thing over here is saying super cities. Okay? So if you look at all of the leaders, we're still there, but Slowly but surely, if we do not focus on it, we are not going to be part of this list anymore. Because those who do not have the same level of English as we do, and the same literacy rates as we have, are now beginning to compete in this new arena. So this is how we, and when I say we, I'm actually part of the group that measures this. And I hope that I could exercise a little bit of corruption so that I could put in more cities and provinces there, but I cannot for the life of me because everything that is digital could be proven, right? It's based on facts, not on feelings. So we measure talent, skill, and quality, the business catalyst, cost and infrastructure, the quality of life, Innovation in digital, the number of super cities and the population. Before there were only four parameters. 
when I came to Iloilo a long time ago and I was lecturing about the next wave cities, there were only four measurements. Talent on top of everything else, cost, business environment, and infrastructure. Lo and behold, these are the, now the new parameters for measurement. And again, nations are now being viewed in terms of their propensity and their political will to embrace digital. In a few months from now, we're actually running through the National ICT Confederation of the Philippines a program called Digital Governance Awards. Meaning to say, those local government units that have used digital in trying to address the requirements in servicing their constituents. And I think there are a couple of entries from, uh, from Iloilo. Last time that I was here was during the time that MVP was here, correct? The first Iloilo Business Forum, that's correct. That was a long time ago, I was very young. Were we already married then? Yes, we were married then already. My wife is here with me as well. And on top of this new wave of digital, there's this thing called startups. Okay, honest lang kita sa aton, ha? I'll interpret later, Craig. Okay. Sino ang hindi ka inchindi sang startup? Could you please raise your hand? Who does not understand what a startup is? This is not a graded recitation. I just want, I just want a good, clear indication of where the audience is. So everybody understands what a startup is. No? A startup is a small business that is looking for a repeatable and scalable bis uh, business model. That's the textbook definition. This is now the tool that is going to make the Philippines a first world nation. Where is Rebecca? Rebecca? So Rebecca has always been waving the flag on the Philippines being a first world nation for the past how many years already, Rebecca? 55? 55? No, no, no. For the past couple of years, she is carrying the flag for the rest of us. While we were all busy doing our own thing, Rebecca Bustamante was saying, we need the Philippines to be a first world nation. Why? Because she knows what a first world nation is. She's tasted it, she likes it, and she wants it for the rest of us. Now, how do we become a first world nation? Then, we have to embrace and nurture and encourage the startup ecosystem. Now, here's the question. Why are so few startups coming from the Philippines? Okay, now we go into a graded recitation, okay? Uh, first person to actually give the real reason uh, will get a round trip tour along, across Mega World Avenue. Okay. <laughs> so here are some of the reasons. <clears throat> One, there are challenges in innovation. We have, do not have the framework and the policy to actually reward innovation. Most of the research and development that we have are embedded where? In school. Thesis of the engineers, the computer scientists, and so on and so forth. And lo and behold, every time they finish school, guess what happens to that particular R&D initiative? It's gone. It's going to gather dust somewhere. Thank you.